you know, girls and music took over and gone. I got out of the hobby. But 25 years later, I'm back. I just, uh, I, I went, I ran, I saw a sign for a local uh, scale meet in New England at, at the South, South, uh, or Radio Control Club. And I thought, well, geez, I remember I had a lot of, my wife was going off doing something that day. I, had the full day. I knew I had the full day to myself, and it was really sunny out. And all of a sudden I had this flashback, like, you know, 25 years ago, I remember used to, on a beautiful day like today, I'd go out and go flying, and then it just clicked in my head, and I Googled, uh, you know, radio control in Boston, and then I saw that there was a scale contest that day, you know, 25 minutes away from me. I went, wow. So I went to the, and I spent the whole day there, and I was so enthralled that I decided I had to get back to the hobby. And, uh, it just happened to be at the same time, I, my, my mother was cleaning out her basement and she sent me some old pictures and there was a picture of, uh, that I used to have hanging in my basement as a kid of, uh, of actually this, this, this point right here. It's actually, there it is. That, that, it was in a Time Life magazine, it was this one, and, and I just, she sent it to me and it was like a, like a, a sign, like, you know, oh wow, that's the plan I got to build. So I built it. And this is rolling plan. And it uh, took me about a year and a half. Uh, of course, a lot more work than I realized that I got myself into. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I really had a lot of fun building it. built up a lot of fuse. Um, with, the, with the advent of the internet and all that kind of stuff, I was amazed how much fun it was to do research. You know, just the educational process of trying to build something like this and learn the history of it was amazing. And the amount of time, I, I mean, that was half the fun doing just getting on the internet and buying books and reading up on it. And uh, I, I decided to enter some contests, and I, I was, had, I, I also had a, I got into, I had an ARF, an ARF Mustang I bought before this Hangar 9, which has really helped me a lot just get back into flying and everything. And I had, I had, I crashed one after 200 flights, flew like crazy for a year, got 200 flights on it, and then uh, got another one, and now I got another 100 flights on it. And, uh, Working on my routines. Uh, it's been great to meet uh, Mitch. He's helped me with the routine a lot. And Scott, Scott, uh, Anna's over there. He's a with a lot of nice like, skill points too. And uh, trying to get the, the flying and the building together simultaneously. It's, it's a 50-50 score with the contest. I did crash this, like Mitch said, on flight 15. I think I got a lockout on my 2.4 was my first time. You know, 2.4 radio. I'm not 100% sure if that was the issue, but after it crashed, I decided I really had to rebuild it because I only had 15 flights, so I went crazy and rebuilt it and, and also got that one. And this Two days before Top Gun, in Florida. Yeah, it was a drag. Drove all the way down there. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? But it's a living learning situation, and it was a great great time going to Florida and, and seeing all that. Matt, Stephen, oh. um, can, you, can you just talk about, this is like a new way to build airplane. A lot of us go in our basements and we build our airplane over the winter or over two winters uh -huh. and uh, you know one or two guys come over and take a look and so forth you if you had one you had a thousand advisors on the internet that were constantly with you I mean it took me days to read 150 pages I read so you had people that you were talking to all the way through this and new guys that would weigh in could you talk about that a little bit sure it's yeah. fascinating oh that, thanks yeah yeah I, I you know when I was a kid growing up, I grew up in the country. I was, in, you know, building these things can be a very isolated situation. And uh, with the advent of the internet now, and I discovered, you know, I, when I was researching how to build this and, and what to do, I found RC Scale Builder, you know, like RC Universe or RC Groups and all those kind of things. And I decided I, I was reading a lot of blogs there, and people building different planes. I thought I'd start my own blog and see what happens and uh, just share it with people and see what happens to do it and uh, it was amazing how much I learned from just having my own blog, people chiming in saying, hey, why don't you try this, why don't you try this, and then, you know, other people would, you know, give off various opinions and you basically got to come up with your own, you know, what, what works for you and you got to do this for yourself. So I got lots of help on the internet of suggestions and, and stuff to do and, and you know, some, sometimes you take the advice and sometimes you don't, you just got to do what you feel is best. But, uh, you know, it, it really helped, I think, like in any educational process, if you, if you write down what you're doing and you reread what you're doing on every day and you, and you take pictures of what you're doing and you look at your pictures and you analyze what your pictures you're doing, it just really makes it more focused, the whole, the whole process. So, it was like 150 pages worth of uh, 
stuff on that on that on that bill. You know, it's a lot of fun. Is there some marking that you have on your that marking on that plane from a flight squad during the second world war? Wait, I'm sorry, which marking are you talking about? Well, the, the, the college, the checkerboard. The yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. It's the 353rd um, fighter group. Um, I decided when I built the other one, uh, I, I would do two uh, with the same close to finish, but not exactly 100%. So this is Prudence, that's Miss Ethel. I love the name, so I, I, I really I really like the checker, checker cowl. So this one has camo on top. This one has the silver wing finish with the aluminum. They both have aluminum type bodies and that has a silver finish which they did in the factory. And this was camo because when they uh, when they uh, out of out of raid in England, they flew out of raid in England that squad and uh, and uh, they had two different squads, the same fighter group, that, you know, but. Uh, so you, this plane was an actual. These are actual. These are actually, yeah. So you know who the pilot yeah, was. this pilot. Yeah, both of them. Both of these planes still exist uh, somewhere. Uh, this one, Prudence, is in 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 Switzerland. The Swiss Army took it over after the war. <coughs> and this one, I'm not sure where that is. But the the pilot of this one, uh, Prudence. Um, um, Bill Tanner, he, he has since passed, but this uh, Douglas Lahama, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Is that how you pronounce the name? Yeah. Uh, I actually just I found his, uh, his, his, his sister-in-law on the internet, and I contacted her, and, and he is still alive, and uh, I had an email conversation with him. And I was trying to get some deep, you know, it's good to hear some history from him and get some details. He didn't have as much detail on the actual plane that I as a modeler would, was trying to get, but he had some great stories to tell me. And, and it, was, it was really great for us to be able to, to meet somebody from the war like that and, and, and hear that story. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is an all balsa built up of plan. About 15, 16 months. This is a composite fiberglass kit. I bought, again, it's been short of the same way. Um, so this, this, this took me about seven months to do. And it's almost, this has not flown yet. This is almost ready to fly. This is now has 30 flights. Is that a, when you were building Prudence, I was uh, watching very closely <laughs> how you were doing the paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, you actually had a silver coat go on. And then you covered over the silver coat and removed certain points so the aluminum would come up and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's how the finish. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's funny with fluorescent lighting; you just don't get the finish as much as you do in sunlight. They're actually a bit brighter than what they look like in here. It's a lot brighter. But um, this has a block. This, like you know, when you put primer on, it's a great primer, and then you then you then you paint colors. Well, this has a primer. And then a black base coat, a uh, base coat of pure black. Uh, yeah, you can see a bit of blue here. Here, here the blue comes out more, but in this kit, I did the opposite. I did all blue with a few panels of black. And then, of course, the wings on here have been painted green, but in terms of aluminum, that's black base coat, that's blue base coat. And what I did is to take each, if, Aluminum, well, if you see how a plane is built, usually has, you get, aluminum has, um, as you can even see here, has a grain to it on, on the metal. And I think when planes are built, they're built in panels, so the panels are put on, they're riveted on, and the panel lines are going to be, the, the grain lines of the metal are going to be in opposite directions, sometimes 45 to 90 degrees. So what you do is you take, uh, take some tape, you mask off each panel one at a time, take your double zero or triple zero steel wool and you just go sh 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 rip up the tape and you keep doing that panel you go over every panel like that and I did that before I did the, the base coat before I sprayed the aluminum finish the aluminum finish is very 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 thin so once you do that whole plane like that then you spray the whole thing and then you can see it looks like more more and more like like a real metal like some people use real metal and use what they call the flight metal kind of stuff 